Adventure Bike Shop, proud sponsors of Adventure Bike TV. Rubbish adverts. Greater adventure. Hello and welcome to the first Adventure Bike TV of 2018. Happy New Year to everybody and I hope you had a fabulous Christmas. Lots of adventure and motorbike related presents. Now this month's show is coming from Barnstormer BMW. And as always, we're going to go straight into the bike review. Oh, oh yeah, you, straight into the bike review. Okay, right, yes, the bike review. Well, it's been a while coming. We have been asked for it, but this month's bike review is the BMW F800 GS. Welds in aluminium can fatigue and fail over time. That's why our panniers are riveted, like aircraft. Metal Mule, engineered to be different. Proud sponsors of the bike reviews on Adventure Bike TV. The F800 GS Adventure has been with us since 2013 and there's been some big changes to this 2017 model to make it Euro 4 emission compliant. On the downside, the Euro 4 rules mandate ugly fork mounted orange reflectors, which of course no one would remove before they even ride the bike off the dealer's forecourt. And the rules also mandate a malfunction light on the dash alongside the newly designed and more easily readable dials. On the upside, we get a new exhaust, full ride-by-wire throttle, which of course brings with it the now almost mandatory electronic riding modes, the spruced up dashboard and new paint finishes. The 800 GSA also gets new galvanized radiator trim and a revised ignition lock casing. In terms of the looks, aside from the revised paint jobs, the biggest single change to them are the redesigned end piece of the standard tailpipe and the HP Sport Silencer by Akram Provich, which is available as an original BMW motorhead accessory, worth buying every day of the week, as it looks great. So it's fairly light touch changes on the looks, and the main changes are really focused on managing the emissions, and the ride-by-wire is a key component of that. Of course it gives you rain, road, enduro and enduro pro that cater for individual riding preferences. But most importantly, and just for a change, I think that's where an enforced change to the bike in order to comply with emissions management has really worked in its favour. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You'll never have the sacred stone. <laughs> oh, this new crazy mother... The F800 GS has been around a fair time now, almost 10 years in fact. When it first came out, I thought I'd love it. Decent horsepower, slim and off-road oriented, and a good price. However, as is so often the case, the reality was somewhat different to the dream, and contrary to many others, I always felt that the 800cc twin engine was somewhat of a personality vacuum and also that the 150 mile tank range wasn't really enough to mix it with some of its bigger contemporaries. What used to be a pretty uninspiring engine performance has been much improved with finer control ability and an improved response. Now, I'm not saying that the engine personality suddenly jumped from being 
an empty vacuum to a stadium rock concert, but it does feel more lively, and to my surprise, it was even knocking on the doors of the House of Fun. In the past, I had had a bit of a soft spot for the 1100, the 1150 and the 1200 GS, and a lot of that was down to its character. It was that combination of the unique boxer engine, that great big beak at the front, its beefiness, it felt purposeful. I always liked it, and when this bike first came out, I felt it had inherited enough of that character to be a nice, characterful looking bike in its own way. Over the years, it's not always done that. But this latest iteration, particularly this one with the red and the grey, it's got it. I really love the look of it. Unfortunately, the day of the test was cold and icy, so I couldn't really give it free reign. But I think if I'd been able to, the House of Fun would have been fully open. The 800GS Adventure is already a proven globe trotting adventure bike. Add your luggage and off you go. Now, with all the changes for 2017, it's not just a globe trotter, it's a full blown 10 grand Harlem globe trotter. Right, you know what, I have got no doubt that this bike will be a fantastically competent adventure bike. I could picture myself riding all day on motorways or back roads. I could picture myself riding off-road and I think because of its heritage, it's quite oriented for that. The bigger question for me is when you start comparing it to the competition because there's really not that much to compare it to. Really, it's the Triumph 800 and I guess at a stretch, the Africa Twin, but I'm gonna put that one to the side, it's a bigger bike. So when you start comparing it to the Triumph, for me, there's two things that stand out. I think this is a better, or will make a better off-road bike. I haven't been able to test it too much because of the conditions today. The Triumph has its triple engine, and therein lies the two big differences. On the one hand, you've got this bike, which I think would be a broadly more capable adventure bike. The Triumph has got the engine, and this engine has grown on me, but it's still it's a bit flat compared to the triple. So what I have one in my garage, and that becomes a dilemma. Now this bike, hmm, I think more oriented off-road. The Triumph, the engine's got more character. But then if I was gonna do something off-road, I'd want this bike. But if I was doing more of an adventure with more tarmac, I'd want the Triumph. The Triumph has got more character in the engine, and I'm gonna pull stronger, but this, this would take me across the Pyrenees, which I don't think I'd do on the Triumph. But then if I wanted to go somewhere and do a track day, I'd have the Triumph. Such a dilemma. The thing is, when I do my adventures, I like to be able to ride off-road a lot if I can. So clearly the choice has to be the BMW. I don't think I've ever been in quite such a quandary about a bike and any of the bikes we've reviewed. So there's only one answer for it. I need a second opinion. Tom, come on. Second opinion, tell me what I think, or what you think. <laughs> um, you know what, I've had a Triumph Tiger 800 XE. I loved it, everyone knows I loved it. I kind of raved about it for ages. But I do think that when they went over to the XCX version and they you know, went by, by wire, mm. which I know this is ride by wire, but I feel like it lost something then. And actually, I'm not a big fan of 1200s anyway. I like my smaller 800cc engines. So I think I would probably go for the BMW. But later this year, they're bringing out the BMW F850. Hmm. So I might hold on to see what that's like. <laughs> <laughs> so there is a kind of not so definitive answer at all, really, from both no. of us. But I have one in my garage. Well, there we go. Then. That, is a, might, that is a definitive answer. I then. might swap it very quickly for the new <laughs> F850 when that comes out. There we go. Depending. There you go. Can I go now? Yeah. Thanks. Bye. <laughs> there we go. There's the answer. Our revolutionary patented QFIT attachment system allows panniers to be removed and fitted in under five seconds. Metal Mule. Engineered to be different. 
proud sponsors of the bike reviews on Adventure Bike TV. Well, I know it was a long time coming, but I am so glad we finally managed to get that review done at the 800. Now, it's time for Under the Visor, and there's a little bit of history to this one. Now, for years, I've been really interested in about going and doing the Trans-American Trail, the TAT. This summer, the TET was launched, the Trans-Euro Trail, and it is a 35 or 36,000 kilometer trail, mostly off-road, all around Europe, and we've got the guys behind it. Don't ride here. Ride here. Explore new horizons with Moto Freight. Proud sponsors of Under the Visor. For a change on this month's Under the Visor, um, I will be doing some interviewing with these wonderful gentlemen, and we're going to be talking about the Trans European Trail. But before we get into any of that detail, you just introduce yourselves, please. Yeah, John. I'm John Ross. I'm uh, I live up in Swindon in North Yorkshire, and for my sins, I am the coordinator, some might say puppet master, of the Trans Euro Trail. Okay, we'll explore in a bit more detail what that means in a second. And yes, Brian? Um, I'm Brian Eland. Um, I live in Newcastle, and uh, I'm the what's called the UK linesman, or generally known as the person who is the puppet, who gets it worked by John, <laughs> um, and you organise the UK route. Okay, right. Well, we'll come back in a minute to those two roles and what that means, but can you just tell me and explain for all the viewers what the Trans-European Trail is and kind of where it's come from? Uh, the trans European Trail, I think we're all aware of the long distance footpath, um, the Pennine Way, the GRs in, in France. Um, we're also aware of the trans Am Trail, across the states and the trans Canada gravel uh, adventure. And we thought there was an opportunity to introduce a long, uh, to do the same in Europe, mm. to create a route running off bitumen, off, off pavement as much as possible, but legal from the very top of Europe, the North Cape of Norway, down to Tarifa on the Straits of Gibraltar. Um, it comprises 34,000 kilometers and growing of route. It's been GPX, uh, recorded, is available for free download, um, and is really aimed at the, the average rider uh, riding the average light middleweight trail bike with lightweight luggage. It's basically backpacking for bikers. Mm. And this has been um, quite a while sort of in the mm. making, and it's very much a, a community-based project. It's not like you've employed people to go and ride these trails and then come back yeah. to you. It's, it, yeah. it's been about the community of riders mm. coming together to create it. Yeah, I mean, I think we've all been in the fortunate position of doing various um, rides around Europe. We've always thought, what's just over the horizon? What could I explore over there? Um, and then we've made contact with, with each other across uh, with, with, with Brian here um, and across the different countries of Europe and um, stitched together a community created uh, long distance path. Yeah. So. Brian, explain what, what the linesman has, has The linesman is, is um, he's, he's the, the overall charge, the person who's, who holds the, the map for the, the country that they're in charge of. Um, and they collate all the information from all the people putting the, the information in. And they decipher that information, make it to the correct format, and make, keep the route as up to date as possible. Um, legal, uh, manageable and sustainable for, yeah. for the entire route, for the, the right size bikes. Um, and it seems to be working, the, the, most of the linesmen are, the linesmen are getting on very well. And I think it's one of the great strengths of the, the project is that we've got lo passionate local experts, the linesmen, mm -hmm. who are passionate about the, their countries passionate about the trails, but also absolutely focused on the sustainability, as you mentioned, of the trails, um, making sure that the, the, the environment is respected, the, the well-being of the trails and the local communities are respected. Um, trail riding is a, um, a pastime which attracts criticism from various points uh, and it has its detractors. 
if we can prove and show that there is a large community or our community of trail riders are uh, responsible individuals that are contributors to remote rural communities in the form of cash um, and, and care for the regions they, they, they move through, then I think we're onto a, onto a winner there. And that's what you know, the lines with us are just absolutely passionate and focused, yeah. focused on. So when, when you put the route together, yeah. I'm assuming you don't, as the, as the UK lines were, you don't know every single trail that you could possibly ride in, in England and Wales. Or do, you, do you take input from other people? I take input from other people who are, who are more localised, they're, they're, they're local experts, and I just put, up, put all that information together um, to, to create the whole route. I'm in a lucky situation, I've trail ridden for 35 years around the, the UK and ridden most areas. So, yes, there is some experience behind it in other areas, but I can't, I can't personally know the south coast of England to like the back of my hand. So I use, I use people who are local um, to, to give them that advice. Mm. And basically, I bring that information together. We use, we use the TRF as a helping hand, and we work in unison with the TRF. Um, and it, it, it works pretty well. It's still an evolving uh, concept. The whole thing's still evolving um, because it's... It's such a new and experimental thing. The whole, the whole thing's it's it's brand new to a lot of people, and it's very out there. It's very strange for people. So we're we're trying to we're, we're trying to evolve it into the right format that it should be. We're, we're pretty close to it. So, so in terms of coming back to your point you made, John, about it promoting it in in the right way yeah. and the right way of riding. So I'm a member of the TRF, so they have their code of conduct, mm. I've got that terminology correct, but yeah, when you join, you, you read it and you understand about respect for the people on the, on, the, on the trails, stop the horses, stop the pedestrians or cyclists or whatever, let them go past, making sure they close gates. I mean, all, the, all that kind of good stuff, you're promoting the tech in the same way. Absolutely. We have exactly the same. And in fact, our, 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 our terms are probably even more um, in depth than what the TRF ones yeah. are, um, we make sure that people do stop for other road users or other users of tracks and, and, and that because y you've got to be presentable. You've you've got to trail riding has to be sustainable for yeah. for the next generation. Yeah. We don't want to be the last people to ever go trail riding yeah. in the UK or Europe. Yeah. Well, what would be your advice um, if you're trail riding, not necessarily the tech, but any kind of trail riding? If you come across a situation where somebody doesn't like you riding where you're riding, either because it's passing through their land legally, of course, but they don't like you being there, they don't like you touching their gates or going near their livestock, what would, all, what would be, having been in that situation myself, I'm interested in your advice in that situation? I think there's probably great, there's often a great temptation at the moment, at the time it happens, to react emotionally. Um, and that just leads to an escalation. In the emotions and this, in this rest take, of take your helmets off. Normally, the first yeah. thing, take your helmet off and speak to the people. Show your face. And Smile. Yeah, that that works works wonders. And, and to be honest, if they're not going to be appeased because you've taken your helmet off and you prepared to speak to them, turn around and go back. There's other ways around. You know, the Tet. It isn't a competition to see who can do the exact route. It's an adventure. Mm. You should get lost on it. You should be able to. Yeah. There should be trails that you can't do. There should be trails that you you find very easy. It's, it's an adventure and people have to, to realise that they've got to use their own common sense when they're out there and realise that if it's getting beyond their ability they've got to turn around mm -hmm. and yeah. go back again. Yeah. Um, they, they've got to work their own fuel stops out, they have to work out their own maintenance on their bikes uh, and people turn around and say no I can ride 500 miles a day on their, on their bike and um, how many miles will I get on the trails done? You'll not get 500 miles done. You just <laughs> won't. <laughs> Don't ride here. Ride here. Explore new horizons with Moto Freight. Proud sponsors of Under the Visor. We liked the idea of the Tet so much that we decided we wanted to go and ride some of it. So in April, we're going to spend two weeks riding the UK part of the Tet. And we're going to be doing it 
in a whole new TV series on the Community Channel, which is actually going to be relaunching in the new year, so it'll have a whole new name. Now, you can probably help us out on this. Keep an eye out on our Facebook page because we're going to want to stay in the most interesting places and meet the most interesting people. When you see details on the Facebook page, maybe you can help us out. Now, time for a break. The Adventure Bike Shop, proud sponsors of Adventure Bike TV. Rubbish adverts. Greater adventure. The Adventure Bike Shop, proud sponsors of Adventure Bike TV. Rubbish adverts. Greater adventure. Right, welcome back. And now it's time for film school. And in a slight break from what Tom's been doing up until now, he's going to be announcing all the details about this year's short film competition. Hello and welcome to this month's film school. So this month we're actually going to be taking a little bit of a break from talking about how to tell your story because we want to introduce to you the Adventure Bike TV short film competition 2018. So we have run a film competition before, uh, it went really well, but we've decided to make a few tweaks and things like that and now we're actually doing it at the start of the year so it will be the 2018 film competition. Now when we say travel film, we're not just talking about motorbikes. Yes, motorbikes is what we do on this show, but we're looking for any type of brilliant travel film, whether you're traveling by motorcycle, by car, by horse, by foot, it doesn't matter. We just wanna see some great stories told. So the rules are very simple. The film must be five minutes or under in length, including credits and titles. It must be all your own work, editing, colour correction, filming, it all must be your own work. If you use any music, please make sure it's Creative Commons license or you have permission to use it. And of course, you need to be happy for us to use it in future episodes of Adventure Bike TV when we show everyone the films that won. Now this year, we're splitting into four categories. Of course, best film. Now best film will be the one that tells the best story Combine that with good cinematography, good sound, and a good edit. Then we will also be giving awards for best cinematography, 
best sound and best edit separately. So of course the winners will get the title of best film or best cinematography etc. But this year we're also trying to put together some sort of prize fund. Uh, we're working on it at the moment and when we find out more details we will let you know but we hope there's going to be some really interesting and fun stuff for you guys to win. To enter your film all you need to do is upload it to YouTube or Vimeo or some other video platform and send us the link via the website and the film competition tab. All entries must be in by the 31st of March. We will be judging them in April and announcing the winner in the May show. So remember to win this, we're looking at a really, really good story. And it doesn't matter where that story takes place. It doesn't matter if you're in the depth of India or in a jungle or in a desert or just traveling for a weekend down some country roads in Wales. It does not matter. What matters is the story. You tell a good story, add some good camera work, some good sound and some good editing to that and you are going to win. That's what we're looking for. Don't worry that you're not going anywhere cool enough to make a brilliant documentary or a brilliant little film. It doesn't matter. You can do this in your backyard. Just try your best. I can't wait to see the films that you come up with. Hopefully some of you have had some use out of these film schools and that'll be kind of put into play when you're making your films. And I'm really excited to see what comes up and we'll update you as we go on uh, through the film school segment. We'll update you with prizes. We'll update you with um, judges and things like that. Uh, so we'll just keep an eye on what's going on and good luck everyone. Get out there, start filming and can't wait to see what you do. See you next month. Well, it is also that time of year when it is time for the Adventure Bike TV Awards. This year, a little smaller, a little more perfectly formed. And here's all the details. Welcome to the Adventure Bike TV People's Awards 2017. Even though we are now in 2018. We are going to look back over 2017 and get our viewers to pick the winners. This year we have narrowed the categories down somewhat, as we had so many last year it was a bit silly. So, enough of all that, what are the categories and who or what are the nominations for 2017? The first category is the same as always, Best Adventure Bike 2017. All bikes have to be currently in production and in alphabetical order they are AJP PR7 650 Adventure BMW F800 GS Adventure BMW R1200 GS Adventure Ducati Multistrada 1200 Enduro Honda Africa Twin CRF 1000L Honda CB500X Husqvarna 701 Kawasaki vs. 1000, KTM 1090 Adventure R, KTM 1290 Super Adventure R, Royal Enfield Himalayan, Suzuki V-Strom 1000, Suzuki V-Strom 650, SWM Super Jewel, Triumph Tiger 800, Triumph Tiger Explorer, Yamaha Super Tenere. Next we move on to a big favourite from previous years, Best Retailer Customer Service. Which retailer has really stood out to you in 2017? Our nominees are The Adventure Bike Shop Adventure Bike Warehouse Adventure Spec Cotswold Outdoor Go Outdoors Get Geared Turatech Next is Best Dealer Customer Service Nominees are BMW Ducati Honda Kawasaki KTM Suzuki Triumph Yamaha this year, although we have cut down the number of categories, we have actually got one new one. Best Travel Journal Filmmaker of 2017. This year, we have had a number of people submit great travel journals and we want to know who you like best. 
The nominees are Anders Yamjo, Antonia Bolingbrook Kent, Broken Tooth, Costa Caris, Ride 50 at 50. And apologies for any pronunciation that was rubbish. Don't worry if you aren't sure which was which, we will be showing some extracts in the travel journal later in the show. Once again this year, we will be giving a Lifetime Achievement Award to one adventure rider. But selfishly, we at Adventure Bike TV will be choosing this one on our own. Lastly this year, we are giving you more options to have your say. Each category will include an other section in which you can name something you feel we have forgotten. To vote, go to the Adventure Bike TV website and click on 2017 Awards. Good luck, everybody! You will have seen that one of the categories in the awards is for the best travel journal. That's our best travel journal, of course. So this month's travel journal is actually a quick reminder of all those entries that you can vote for. That was the show, I hope you enjoyed it. I had the pleasure of watching Tom on the other side of the camera who was looking very pretty as always. Now, don't forget to stay in touch either in the comments below or via the Facebook page. Tell us all about your adventures this year, what bikes you're gonna be riding, and of course, if you've got any films that you wanna put in the travel journal. And also, keep an eye out on the Facebook page where we'll be putting details very soon of our fabulous new TV series where we'll be riding the Tet. We will see you next month.
Adventure Bike Shop, proud sponsors of Adventure Bike TV. Rubbish adverts. Greater adventure.